going to walk you through replacing the trailer tongue jack on your Yamaha Shorelander trailer. I have a 2020 Yamaha AR210 with the Shorelander trailer. Um, and this is the tongue jack that comes with it, which is a piece of garbage. It's made by Dutton Laneson Company. Um, I think the 19 footers and the 24 footers have this as well. Definitely all the 21 footers do. Um, this has happened to a number of people where the jack has gone bad. In my case, I had two problems. The first one was um, it wouldn't raise the, uh, the trailer hitch high enough to be able to get it off my vehicle easily. Um, and my vehicle already had the, uh, the hitch ball was lowered with the three and a half inch, uh, drop down hitch. Um, the second thing that I had an issue with was, um, it broke on me. Uh, maybe I over torqued it cause I was trying to get it up too high, but it broke to the point where every time I spun the handle, um, it wouldn't move unless the wheel moved too. Um, but it was to the point where you literally could not realistically raise or lower um, the jack. So it left me kind of stranded with my vehicle in storage um, because I couldn't get my boat off my vehicle. So anyway, um, and it's honestly, it's kind of a flimsy looking thing anyway. Um, so I'll be glad to get rid of it. And what I decided to do, especially since this is a pretty important part of the boat and all the weight of your boat is resting on that thing, or a lot of weight anyway, I decided I wanted to get something quality. Um, with this existing jack stand, I could never really, it wasn't easy to even wheel the boat around. So this time I wanted to get something really good. And what I went with is um, made uh, by a company called Arc. It's an Australian company. And I'll get more into that later. Um, some other people on the Jet Boaters forum have bought this as well. Um, so I'm going to be installing that today. But first, I want to go over how do you get off the existing trailer tongue. And it's actually really easy. So I'll show you that right now. To take off the existing trailer tongue jack, all you are literally going to need is this. A 3 quarters inch crescent wrench. That's it. Usually they come pretty well sized like this. Um, it's reasonably thin and there are only two little bolts that hold your tongue jack in these um, So behind the uh, behind this plate There's a little bracket, but basically all you need to know is that there's two bolts That are holding your tongue jack on and what you do is you just get up inside um, Kind of from underneath and you just loosen them and then pull the nuts right off Took me 30 seconds to get this tongue jack off. It's literally that easy. All you need is a three quarters inch wrench. You don't need to remove the bow stand or anything like that. It's simple. This is the trailer tongue jack that I bought. It's made by Arc. Like I said, it's an Australian company. It's got a 1,650 pound rating. Um, it's got two wheels. It has a removable handle. Um, in case you're worried about someone using that to steal your boat. Um, and uh, when you unbox it, you get the main assembly here. Here's the two wheels. Um, these are the bearings for those wheels and some other bolts. Um, so not a whole lot to really put together. And uh, we've got the instructions here, which are pretty, seem pretty straightforward so far. Um, one thing that I can tell you right away that you'll need is a soft mallet um, because the first step will be putting these bearings inside the wheels and they don't just really you're going to need to kind of tap them in with something soft that's not going to dent them so uh, make sure you have a soft mallet before you get started and i'll also say this the weight of this trailer tongue jack is probably uh three times the weight of the existing uh stock one so i, I can immediately tell the quality of um, the rubber on the wheels, um, the, the heft, having the two wheels is going to be a huge difference from this. This is, this is plastic right here. That's just a plastic wheel, hard, hard plastic. It's not even rubber. Um, I can tell you just by feeling this thing, this is, this is going to be legit. First step is, uh, and you can do this before you even head out to the boat, is going to be to put the bearings in the wheel. Uh, wheel looks like it's interchangeable both sides, so it doesn't really matter what side you have. 
um, as is the bearing. I don't see any difference on the bearing or what I expect there to be. But when you put the bearing inside here, it doesn't really doesn't really go in. It's um, a tight fit, I'm assuming intentionally so. So what you're gonna wanna do is take your mallet and gently pound the bearing in. Making sure that I'm doing it level. And so you can see it's it's going in there. But realistically, there's no way you're easily pushing that in by hand. And I think we'll keep going until it's flush. And then we'll repeat on all the other side and the other wheel. Thing I want to mention about the bearings is they will go flush, as you can see here. Um, it doesn't feel like um, they will sometimes, but uh, keep going. They will get they will get flush. Um, there shouldn't be any kind of lip standing outside of the bearing. Um, I wouldn't hit it too hard. Make sure you're using a nice, reasonably soft mallet, and just keep working at it until it gets flush. Just like that, you can't see any edge, and uh, I'd say you're you're good. One final note on the on the bearings: uh, be careful when you're tapping them in, tapping them in, that it doesn't start going sideways, because um, then it can make it a lot more difficult for you. So keep checking as you tap in the bearings to make sure that they are uh, that you're tapping it in, um, you know, flat, so that you have time to adjust if you're not. But now I've got them both in, and I can see the bearings. Uh, they're going to slide really nice, and we're ready for the next step. Before we do the next step, um, just for my own sanity, I'm just going to do a quick test of the bearing. So I um, just want to make sure everything's lined up straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bolt through both wheels like that, and then I'm going to spin it and make sure that they spin really nicely and evenly. Um, and they do. Um, and you can hold it up and spin them and just make sure that everything is nice and square and spinning great before you assemble everything else. But uh, it looks really good so far. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow these instructions. We're gonna put a, basically it goes bolts, washer, wheel, washer, wheel, washer, and then the nut. So we'll do that right now. Put on the bolt, put on the washer. Put on the first wheel. Then another washer. All right, so following the instructions, put the bolt through. We have a washer here, then one wheel, then a washer in between the wheels, another wheel, and then the final washer. And then we have a uh, locking nut that we'll put on the end. So next step that you'll do is you'll tighten these up, um, actually using that same three quarter inch crescent wrench that you used to take the uh, existing uh, tongue jack bolts off. So you'll also notice there's a big uh, gap here, but um, that's okay. You're actually gonna keep uh, tightening until it's uh, fully tight and then this will close up and it will be flush. Again, you're only gonna wanna tighten it up until the point where there's not uh, as much wobble uh, horizontally between the wheels and then stop so that the wheels can still freely spin. So I'm just gonna get it a little bit tighter. All right, so now I've tightened it up and there's really almost no horizontal movement, but plenty of, uh, plenty of spin. Um, if you tighten it up much more than this, then the wheels will spin slower and that might be your sign that it's a little bit too tight so just find the perfect balance that seems good for you okay actually um so i gave it some more thought and i decided you know the best thing for this we don't really care about the wheels rolling really fast but the more that this is like one unit and isn't able to wobble back and forth probably the better that this thing is going to hold up long term so you can see i still have plenty of wheel spin i don't need any more than that for it's a trailer we're not going fast with this thing um, but it's very solid. The wheels are really like, you know, one unit and that's going to hold up a lot better.
At this point, I think I'm prepared to uh, go out to my boat trailer, which is in my storage lot, and put this bad boy on. Um, I checked all of the bolts are three quarters inch, so you'll just need two three quarters inch wrenches, and that should be it. It does mention that it only fits drawbars up to 50 millimeters wide. I haven't measured mine on the Shorelander trailer. I have no idea how wide it is. But if it's wider than that, then we need bolts that are, I assume, longer than this, which I might need from the looks of it. So if that's the case, I'll find out and I'll be prepared to go to Home Depot and get some high quality new bolts if I need to. So I'm at my trailer now and uh, you can see where I removed the, the old tongue jack, um, took that off. Now the new jack, um, I'm not going to put there. It's going to go on here and it'll mount right here. And then there's a, uh, uh, a bracket and a bolt goes through, um, basically something like that. Now you'll notice the bolts that they gave me, not even close enough, not even remotely close enough. So I am going to need to buy some new bolts and make a trip to the store. Uh, I'm guessing for how big I'll need of a bolt, probably, mm, I'd say between the bolt and the nut, looks like four, four and a half inches should probably do the trick. So I'm gonna get a really high quality bolt, three fourths inch, same thickness and all of that. Um, and I'll bring this with me to the store. And uh, yeah, if I'm looking at this, probably, yeah, at least, I'd say at least four inches, maybe, yeah, probably four and a half just to be safe. So another trip to Home Depot. All right, so it took me a little bit of trial and error, but um, what I ended up needing to do is go to Home Depot and buy four and a half inch bolts um, so on our trailers and mine is the uh, 2020 uh, 21 foot shorelander trailer the the beam that we attach it to is about three inches wide but you need about a four and a half inch bolt um, to apply the new trailer bracket to so um, this is the bolt that comes with it um, and this is a four and a half inch bolt and that's exactly uh, what you'll need it's long enough to go in the locking nut, but um, not too long where it doesn't look aesthetically good. So anyway, I got stainless steel. Um, these are half inch um, coarse thread. So there's the package. I got washers. The uh, original um, kit doesn't come with washers, but I figured it can't hurt to put it on the, the hex nut um, or the hex bolt head. And then finally, um, you'll only need four washers because the nuts will actually sit inside this bracket, which does not allow it, the nut to move, as you can see. Um, so you'll only need one wrench when tightening this because this holds the nut in place. Um, and that's another reason why when you replace these bolts, you want them to be the same size, which is the, uh, the half inch. And it go, again, go with four and a half inch long bolts and you should be good. I went with stainless steel um, so that I never have to worry about it rusting. Um, stainless steel, I guess bolts are a little bit above grade too, but I think that should be um, fine in, in terms of, um, you know, these things being tough enough and of course they're not going to corrode. So, all right. All right. So the install is actually going to be really easy at this point. Um, other than this is a little heavy to work with, we're only going to need this these two brackets and the four bolts nuts locking nuts and washers i didn't mention that before make sure that you um, replace the nuts that came in the kit with locking nuts um, that match the uh the thread of your bolts i couldn't get the exact same thread count which i don't think really matters with the uh with them this is a coarse thread the ones that came with the kit were a little bit finer but that should be fine as you can see we've already removed the stock uh, tongue jack and the new jack will be going right here actually behind the bow stand there is not enough room on my particular trailer the 21 foot trailer um, and I know there's not room on the 19 foot either and maybe the 24 foot to actually be able to put this 
um, new stand here because this is about eight inches. So this is the place that it will go. And I talked to Yamaha dealer repair guy and he said that's fine having it behind the bow stand in, instead of um, in front of it. Some people have moved their bow stand, but uh, I don't really want to do that. And like the dealer said, it's already adjusted to be where it should be. So why, you know, why mess with that? What you need to do um, before you start bolting things on is use these uh, use these brackets to figure out exactly where you're going to put the bolts in relation to your drawbar. Um, it mentions in the diagram that there's uh, it fits 100 millimeter, 130, 150 millimeter. I actually don't have millimeters on my uh, on my uh, measuring tape, so I don't know how many millimeters this is. But in any case, you only have a couple options. So take the bracket here and um, line it up a few different ways with the holes. I also noted in their diagram they only show four holes on the bracket. There's actually five, six. Um, anyway, so we're going to want to use the location where the holes in the bracket will be as close to the drawbar as possible. Um, and you can see with this one, if I use this position, that hole's a little too high. If I move it down one, that one's way too low, but if I move it here, that hole is right above and that hole is not perfect, but but below. And this is as close as we can get. So um, we're going to use that hole and that one for mounting the bracket. Um, so that's important to figure out kind of right away. And another thing you can do too uh, to play with it is um, just temporarily put the bolts in this bracket and uh, line it up. And so you can see there's a little bit of, uh, there's going to be a little bit of play, but that's, that's about as close as it's going to get. Um, and then we'll want to line up our jack accordingly with those same hole positions that we're going to use here. Okay, so now we're uh, ready to put this on for the first time. Uh, I've got my brackets here ready, and I'm going to be using the brackets in this position. There is a difference in the spacing of the holes down here compared to here. So with mine, the ones with the three holes closest are going to the top, and it'll probably be the same on your trailers as well. Uh, then make this a little bit easier for me, because again, this thing's heavy. I'm going to put the bolts in here first. Notice I've got a bolt and a washer on this side. Set it up here. I'm going to get as close to the uh, tongue to the bow stand as I can, and then we'll get one bracket. And make sure I've got it on the right way. Put the bracket through on this side, and then locking nut. And the locking nut's not going to move in the bracket. It's just going to sit in there. And that's going to keep the locking up from, the bracket will keep the locking up from moving. This in a couple of steps, I think this is just kind of a gradual process. Um, my plan is, um, first I've got this kind of uh, flush against here. Uh, I've loosely, you know, reasonably kind of tightened them up against here. What I found that works really good is one of these uh, type uh, crescent wrenches. Of course, if you've got a, uh, you know, a socket, then that's also... That's also fine. Um, so I'm tightening it up here first with these bolts against here. Now notice there's going to be a gap underneath. I think later I might shift it up. For right now, I just kind of want to get it all straight up and down and nice and flat. A couple of observations um, that I had after I first put this on that I realized I should call out now is in terms of where you put it, on what side you put it on, um, don't forget your breakaway tongue. So in my case, my breakaway tongue, uh, this pops out so that slides that way. So you probably wanna have your tongue jack on the opposite side that your breakaway tongue um, collapses to. So if you use that, your tongue jack isn't gonna be in the way. So on my trailer, that's not a problem. Everything then stays on this side and the tongue will fold over to that side. Um, another thing that I d decided to do 
I'm looking at this. I don't have the bolts all the way tightened up yet, um, but you can see there's some play here. Originally, um, I was thinking of having this flush the bolts um, to the top of the rail, and then at the bottom, the bottom would have the gap. However, in looking at some other, how other people did theirs, and after I had, in fact, um, tightened mine up for the first time, and then this lifted higher, I decided that I'm going to bolt it down with the bottom bolt um, touching all the way. So once you've got all four of them on, um, you can just use the jack itself to crank it up so that bolt, as you can see, is now resting on there. And I think that's the position that I want to have um, with it going forward before I tighten everything down. So you will have a gap here, um, and that's okay because it's gonna be resting on this, but more importantly, this pressure here is gonna be keeping it um, on, the, on the trailer. So now I'm going to uh, lift this up a little bit while I tighten all the bolts down. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to tighten up all the bolts. Um, I'm gonna use a torque wrench. I'm, you know, they don't have it in the instructions. I want it good and tight, but I don't want it too tight where it's, you know, hurting the bolts or bending in the, the trailer frame. So I'm just guessing 40 foot pounds of torque should be um, more than enough and torque wrench will just let me be consistent. Um, but one last check, you can see this is, uh, happens to be nice and square with uh, the uh, bow guide there for whatever it's worth. And I think I'm ready to tighten up these bolts. I've taken some pressure off the wheel now. Um, it's already pretty tight, so this is just kind of the last final step to uh, make sure that it's on there for good. All right, so that's 40 pounds and that seems about right to me. Um, and also you'll notice that, again, I have the gap on the top, but nothing on the bottom. I ended up bumping this up to 50 uh, foot-pounds of torque. That just seemed right to me, again, kind of guessing, but I didn't want to overdo it. It seems plenty tight, especially especially when you're not doing it with a torque wrench, but a smaller crescent wrench. It's pretty tight. Um, much more than that, you might start squeezing in this or, or kind of warping these brackets. So I think that'll work. And again, all the weight is going to always be on these uh, bottom bolts if it did ever slip at all, which I don't think it will. So looks, feels pretty solid. This is the final look. You can see how far out the four and a half inch bolts came once everything was fully tightened all the way. So that looks pretty good. And we're ready to test it out. All right, so now that the uh, jack stand is fully installed. It's time to test it out for the first time. Um, I have been stranded here basically in my in my parking spot with the boat attached to my Jeep because as I mentioned before the stock Shorelander provided jack broke on me. So it's been attached up to the Jeep ever since. But we're going to uh, go ahead and disconnect all this. it up the handle is nice and easy to turn um, it's got a really nice grip and it seems a lot easier to turn than the last one did I did I did shock my uh, trailer tires just because this is on a little bit of a slope so I didn't know because these wheels are so good I wasn't sure if the thing might start rolling on me as soon as I take it off. And there we go. Very solid, easy to crank. Um, and my other jack could not even get this high. 
for some reason and my vehicle's not lifted it's got slightly bigger tires but it's not lifted it had a three inch drop on the trailer hitch ball and the old jack wouldn't even go high enough for me to take it off i'd be having to weigh it down my the back end of my vehicle um so this and i'm not even close to um i'm not even close to the top of how high this thing would go plus i can also make a big adjustment here uh you could really crank this thing up high if you needed to for some reason so uh yeah so far awesome one last thing i'm going to show you is um how the trailer jack on our trailers can be stowed well it's pretty easy so i've got it coupled back on my vehicle now i suppose i should just for just for good habit's sake all right so i'm gonna bring the wheel up you don't know what that is And depending on how you like your reels positioned, I'm going to be able to go either way, this way or this way. I have clearance both ways. Um, also, there's a little hole here. So when you bring your wheel and you crank it up, it goes inside that hole. And then your wheels lock. Um, this lever is for those one-time kind of big adjustments. Um, so, you know, wherever you need to have it on your trailer, you can see where mine is, which works fine. I'm, more than high enough and then to uh, stow your jack you just pull this out and then you and you turn it see if i can do it one-handed oh almost might need my second hand there we go like i said it is uh it's very heavy um plenty of room that way and then i can also bring it forward if i wanted to as well um, I'll show you that just for the sake of the video. Um, and if I wanted my wheels up, I guess I can leave them like that. And there you can see it in the up position. So whatever you prefer. Uh, remember to remove the handle. I would probably always take the handle off and throw it in your truck. Otherwise, someone else could take it off, and it's a great anti-theft uh, feature. Um, and also, this thing can fold up or down however you want it. Um, yeah, so, so far, I'm super impressed with the jack. I think it's going to hold up really well for a really long time, and uh, what I can say, I recommend it, and it also it looks really good. That completes my review of the Arc XO Black Edition trailer jack. Very pleased so far. Install wasn't bad. The directions weren't the greatest, but you know, uh, like me, you could have figured it out on your own. But I thought I'd put this video together to help make it a little faster and easier for you. Um, so hopefully it does. <laughs>